Welcome everyone. I'm now calling this meeting to order. Please stand with us. We'll be letting prayer, Alderman Gallagher, and then please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, they'll be led this evening by Alderman Payne. Heavenly Father, thank you for leading us all here in this meeting tonight, Lord. Lord, we want to pray for the victims in Vegas, Lord Jesus, as well as the uh, victims of the hurricanes, Lord. Lord, that you would uh, provide for those who need, Lord, and Lord, that you would bless those who are providing. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Okay, first on the agenda is the approval of minutes for the October 3rd, 2017 meeting. Mr. Mayor, I move we approve the minutes of the regular meeting of October 3rd, 2017, with any additions, deletions, or corrections. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Payne, second by Alderman Brooks. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Brooks? Yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Hill? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Mueller? Yes. Okay, and that motion carries. Next on our agenda will be the swearing in of our new mayor's youth council members. I'm going to come down front. If all of you will join me down front, all together, please. your hand and repeat after me. Um, I'll just fill in your name, okay? I, in your name, do solemnly swear that I'll faithfully support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Mississippi and obey the laws thereof. This is tricky. That I am not disqualified. That I am not disqualified from holding the office of mayor's youth council. From holding the office of mayor's youth council. And I will faithfully discharge the duties. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which I'm about to enter. Of the office upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations and thank you. Next on the agenda is a resolution to surplus property in our uh, South Haven Fire Department. Mr. Mayor, I move we adopt the resolution to, uh, to adopt surplus property in the South Haven Fire Department as presented on the state. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Brooks, second by Alderman Kelly. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Brooks? Yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Hill? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, that motion carries. Next on the agenda is a resolution for Freeport tax exemption. Mr. Nick Manley, City Attorney. This is just the resolution for Freeport tax exemption um, for South Wark Metal Manufacturing Company, Mississippi. Uh, it's been reviewed by the DeSoto Economic Council, uh, recommended for approvals tonight, also approved by the DeSoto County Board of Supervisors yesterday. Uh, for the free port tax exemption. It's not a real property or a uh, personal property, just a free port tax exemption for those goods in transit from uh, the location in South Haven, Mississippi. Mr. Mayor, I move we adopt a resolution of the Mayor Board of Alderman uh, granting free port warehouse and Valero tax exemption to South Wark Metal MFG Company, Mississippi, as authorized by Section 273151. Second. 
We have a motion by Alderman Payne, second by Alderman Hale. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Brooks? Yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Hale? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? <coughs> yes. Alderman Weaver? Yes. Okay, and that motion carries. Next on the agenda is a resolution for sanitation assessment. <coughs> it's just a resolution for those unpaid sanitation fees uh, pursuant to Mississippi Code. With assessments on those be on those lots. Uh, Mr. Graham, would we adopt the resolution for assessing unpaid sanitation fees as presented on this date? Second. We have a motion by Alderman Brooks, second by um, Alderman Payne. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Brooks? Yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Hale? Yes. Alderman Yes. Alderman Yes. Yes. Okay, and that motion carries. Next on the agenda is a resolution to claim private property. Mr. Mayor, I move we adopt the resolution granting authority to claim private property as presented on the state. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Brooks, second by Alderman Hale. Is there any discussion among the board? Hearing none, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak regarding any of the properties? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Brooks? Yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Hale? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Weaver? Yes. Okay, and that motion carries. Next on our agenda is our planning agenda. Ms. Whitney Cook. Yes, sir. We just have one application tonight, and it is a request to rezone 58 acres uh, between Meadow Point Drive and Getwell Road on the north side of Church Road um, from the existing R20 to a plan unit development. There's four, there's four actual phases in it, um, all with a different type of housing. You do have some 55 and up. They're proposed at 1,800 uh, square foot minimums. You've got 2,000 square foot minimums on the interior, and you've got uh, 2,450 backing up to all sides of Bell Point, which will match what the minimums are there. You do have some aesthetic pond areas. You've got a roundabout in the center. You've got a streetscape with boulevards, sidewalks on both sides. Each yard proposed with a different streetscape tree, uh, one or two in each one. Um, we did have some requests by the uh, neighboring properties to be conscious of the drainage worsening in Bell Point. Um, we did bring that to the attention of the developer at the Planning Commission level. Uh, two people from Bell Point were here to speak on that behalf. So we have come up with a strategic plan to make sure that if anything, it betters the drainage on them versus making it worse. It may reduce down a 20-foot tree preservation area that we have placed along all sides that butt up to Bell Point because you do have some really large existing trees that we want to preserve. Um, the applicant has agreed to all of that. Um, they did have to provide staff with um, some elevations and design criteria. I think they were able to submit to some of these. What you've got in front of you now are what is being uh, constructed right now in the Bramble subdivision just south of this development. Uh, these are your 55 and up homes. They're ranging in anywhere from 1,800 to 2,000 square feet. Um, they've done very good selling in the Brambles. They would like to utilize these for the 55 and up. Um, all the ones that you're seeing here. You do have some elevations for the proposed designs. They're going with the 2000 and the 2450s. Um, we can just keep going just a minute. Uh, somewhere in here. Yes, there you go. If you'll scroll down right there, this is kind of the design they're going for for um, the exterior that's not included in the 55 and up area. Also, the garage is high pitch roof, uh, diverse mixture of materials, um, kind of has a, a bungalow type design to it. Um, everybody at the Planning Commission was acceptable to the design criteria. Um, they did ask that that be placed inside the text documentation, which we've done. Um, again, you've got over 20% open space. You've got a five-acre park on the interior. Um, it was looked at at one point in time to be gated. It has been suggested that we're not going to gate that one by the applicant and also from emergency services. We thought one way in and one way out would be a little uh, dangerous. So um, all that being said and the drainage um, being addressed by the applicant, the Planning Commission did vote unanimously in favor of it with um, their exact submittal. Mr. Mayor, I move for approval item number one on the planning agenda. Second. Second. <clears throat> 
We have a motion by Alderman Payne, second by Alderman Wheeler. Is there any discussion? HOA. There will be a, there will be an active HOA that will be in place to maintain all the open spaces, the boulevards, the detention ponds, uh, the park. Detention. Yes, there's two detention ponds on the front, which you'll see in the text. Uh, there will be wet ponds, so there will be aesthetic. And you do have uh, a couple more that will capture some of the drainage. They may have to be expanded once we get really inside the drainage problems on Bill Point, um, but they will be maintained by an HOA. We say change of character in the area for the charities, by the way. Yeah. Well, this is not it. The, the character of what we're rezoning to is not changing single family residential and half acre lots. It's not really changing the character of the neighborhood. It's just allowing us to mandate the heated square footage and the elevation design. So we're kind of enhancing the existing zoning. That's what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Any other discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Briggs? Yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Hill? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Yes. <laughs> okay, and that motion carries. Thank you. All right, next on our agenda is our mayor's report. I uh, just want to update everyone on a few things here. Um, the governor of Mississippi has declared uh, the holidays for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, the holidays will be uh, Thursday, November 23rd, uh, and then that following Friday, the 24th. Uh, Christmas will be 25th and 26th of December. And then there'll just be one day, January 1, in observance of New Year's Day. Uh, Veterans Day holiday, uh, the 11th, is on a Saturday, so the uh, city holiday will be on Friday the 10th of uh, this year. We do need board action, Nick Wright, to approve. Is that or put it in the minutes? But you don't want to approve the uh, day after Thanksgiving and the day after Christmas. Okay, so can I have a motion to approve those as city holidays? I'll make that motion. Second. Okay. Got a motion by Alderman Kelly, second by Alderman Hale. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. I just have a motion carries. Um, our Veterans Day event uh, will be on Friday, November 10th at the Arena, uh, starting at 11 a.m. Uh, Ms. Christy Faulkner has uh, handled that again as she has done for so many years to get that ready. I uh, will tell you, if you've not been to that, that's one of the, that's one of the best city events you can go to. Uh, it, it just words don't do it justice. You have to come see the people there, but it's outstanding. So I would encourage everyone to go to the Veterans Day Luncheon if you can. Next week, um, Wednesday, October 25th at 1.30, uh, the Interstate 55 and Goodman Road Bridge will be renamed after Senator George Guerrero Sr. Um, Senator Guerrero was instrumental, I think, uh, introduced the legislation uh, to bring the interchange there uh, at that bridge. So uh, the county has been working hard on this for quite some time, uh, and it, the bridge is going to be renamed uh, in honor of uh, Senator Guerrero. So uh, that ceremony will be October 25th at 1.30 on location there. Actually, actually it's going to be, it's going to be at Baptist Hospital in the DeSoto Conference Room. Okay, and that's all we have there. Um, board, you were notified that uh, we did get the volleyball contract. And, uh, Wes and Nick have reviewed that, waiting on uh, that signature from DeSoto Legacy. Uh, so that has been uh, signed by them. So uh, we just need a motion tonight to get a, to approve that contract, and it will open the floor for discussion. Discuss, Mayor. Second. <laughs> a motion by Alderman Payne, second by Alderman Brooks. An open discussion. The highlights, um, I'll just go over the, uh, the summary page of the highlights of the agreement. This again, as we discussed in several uh, prior meetings, is to use the arena for volleyball. Uh, there will be seven courts there. Uh, DeSoto Legacy is the group. Um, we did not have staff, since it's a new program, we don't have city staff to run the volleyball program. So we contract or proposing to contract with this uh, agency that 
as extremely experienced in volleyball. What they will do is pay us $5,500 a month uh, to use four courts. We've made that clear that we will always have other courts available for public use. Uh, but in exchange for those courts, they will operate the City Recreational League. Uh, they will also bring tournaments uh, to the arena. In the arena, they do keep, as part of the agreement, they do keep the uh, entry fees because uh, they do have to pay the officials. Uh, but all the other um, revenue would be similar to our Snowden operation where all concessions and gate will go to the City of South Haven. Uh, eventually, uh, we believe that it's ideal to, um, and y'all heard of this, we've talked about it before, to level the floor in the arena. If you level the floor, uh, it makes that facility even more versatile to do kind of what we've talked about. Uh, we've had concern about some of the prior events that have been there, like the flea market, gun show, things like that. Uh, we want to try to be as flexible as we can to allow as much as we can. Uh, the leveling of the floor will increase our versatility uh, and flexibility tremendously. Um, we will obviously don't have that done next, uh, this year. Hopefully we'll be able to get that done uh, at some time in the near future. Um, but basically that's it. You know, volleyball is something that the city's never had before. We've never had an official volleyball league. Uh, many of you will know that uh, it offers uh, enormous opportunities for young ladies with college scholarships. Uh, it's a very popular thing. And uh, we, we thought long and hard, uh, Wes Brown, our parks director and I have uh, talked about this for years. I've always said since I became mayor looking at it that I think it's a, a great facility. It's a very underused facility. And I think we can use it for so much more. Bringing volleyball there uh, not only brings, you know, the opportunities for the young ladies, uh, but it also uh, brings life back to our original business district. You know, if you have a flea market and gun show now, you know, you have that on the weekend. Uh, with volleyball, you're going to have traffic there on the weekends for tournaments. You're also going to have, you know, uh, Monday through Friday, uh, people attending the events there. It's been my uh, opinion over the last four years that we've got to take the revitalization of our original business district very seriously, and we've got to do things that, that simply bring the people back. You know, it's no secret that our Cherry Valley Football League has been in existence for 49 years, has the lowest participation. Uh, in the history of its existence. A lot of that has to do with concussion scare, fall baseball, stuff like that. Um, but we need life in our original business district, however we can bring it there. Uh, we talked about other sports, but felt like uh, the volleyball gives us the uh, uh, kind of the best bang for our buck, you know, getting, uh, doing more for our young ladies and also bringing traffic back, you know, to our original business district. So. Uh, long way to say, uh, we got the temporary courts uh, or that will be installed onto the floor. Uh, we'll have seven courts, uh, four of those will be used by this contract for the Soto Legacy. Uh, we feel good about them, they're very experienced. Uh, they have high standards on what they, what they teach. It's, they're not just teaching volleyball, they're teaching you know, um, work ethic and uh, you know, teaching things that will uh, help all you know, in other endeavors after they leave sports. But, Anyway, that's basically the summary of it. Um, any other discussion? Mr. Mayor, got a couple questions. Uh, so, as far as the rec league, do all the rec league fees will that go to the city of South Haven, or will that go the, to the to Soto Legacy? Uh, the fees now in the rec league, the fees uh, will go to us, but um, we got to pay. You, you will definitely have officials cost out of that. What do we have in there, Nick, with that with the rec league? Directly, it's just, just um, the only cost you would have is paying the officials. Right. Now, there was discussion about uh, possibly having the other coaches do the officiating, so it would be a volunteer type thing. Uh, I can tell you, I, do, I don't know volleyball, but I can tell you from other sports, uh, you can imagine that gets a little tricky. You know, if something doesn't go right for one team, uh, side, so you know, yeah. Another question I had, I guess it's more of a concern, the Soto Legacy, um, they're primarily a competitive team like the other competitive teams in baseball and everything else, or is there a concern about them running the rec league? I know they have more experience than obviously we do. Uh, That's a good I, guess, I guess my, my concern is would the rec league be, a, I want to make sure that the rec league is a priority. Yes. And thank you for that question. That's actually uh, one of the things I did address with them personally. 
Um, they have a, they don't call it the rec league. They call it, they have another name for it. Do you, do you remember what they what they said? Nick? It's like a development type thing, but um, they're not just competitive. Obviously, they deal with all uh, competition levels of volleyball, so they're involved in competitive. But they also have these leagues that are I call it development league. But they they view that as uh, uh, it's kind of like uh, you triple say baseball. How you have single A, double A, triple A. Uh, they would use uh, our league is like that, like to start beginners, get them going, where then they would possibly have <coughs> options to be competitive players on the weekend. Well, I could definitely see where they would use the rec league to pinpoint individuals that they really wanted to recruit on their team sure. and put a high pressure, high pressure for sales pitch to to do so. And I, I guess I feel a little weird about that. I don't know. Well, it's just because they're running the league. Right. Uh, the issue that we face as a city is we have to choose someone to do it. Um, none of us, again, this is, uh, we're, we're blazing the trail here. You know, this is something that we've not done before. Uh, so we feel like they're one of the most qualified as far as, you know, knowing how to operate it. Uh, but I do get your concern. I have expressed to them, you know, repeatedly uh, that we, we're going to keep some courts open for the public. We want it to be a public facility. Um, I guess I'm not, I don't know the, Totally, I can't say that. I mean, we won't know until uh, we get some experience behind us. Now, we do have a clause in there. After was it two years, Nick? Two years, we can get out of out of the agreement. After, after May thirty first, eight months, six months. So you have a hundred twenty day period with hundred twenty days notice. You can get out of it if you don't like the way that they're running. What are your thoughts on the economic impact? The economic impact. Uh, again, I'm just I'm just going to give you my opinion based on other sports. I don't know volleyball. The only thing I know about volleyball is that um, it's offering tremendous opportunities for our young ladies now. And as far as the traffic it brings, um, I would just I view that it will be similar to some of the other sports. And again, you're bringing customers back to the original business district, which creates a positive economic impact for the original business district. You bring more customers to an area. It's no secret you uh, you have people have better chances to do better with business. So we we believe that we, anything that we do to bring traffic back uh, to the original business district is going to help all the restaurants, all the other uh, hotels. I mean, you know, it, it would increase the demand for getting hotels back in this area, um, and any other business is going to also you know benefit from have, just simply have more customers in the area. And Mr. Mayor, please don't under, misunderstand. I'm totally for the volleyball. Uh, uh, at the at the arena, I, I'm excited about the additional traffic using the facility. You know, 30 days out of a month, as opposed to five days out of a month. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm excited about the possible economic impact. I just uh, I just had a couple concerns yes. about just how it would be run. I do feel a little bit better that if we don't like the way it's going, that we can you know we have an out after you know a one year, basically six months trial. So. Well, and again, I'm sorry that I can't give you a more uh, comfortable feeling. I, I don't know. Again, this, you know, we are, we're, again, we're blazing the trail. So I mean, these people seem to be uh, some of the most qualified people, and uh, they are, uh, at least uh, verbally, they are more uh, committed to the rec league and development of the players as well. Are, are they a for profit organization or are they a, a charitable organization? Um, I don't know that they're charitable. Uh, I'm not their past. I think it's more a volunteer thing. Okay. It's mostly they're, volunteer. They're LLC. Yeah. It wasn't their discussion. Uh, so Alderman Hale had mentioned some discussion earlier about, again, I know I briefly touched on that, but the uh, the events that are there now, mm -hmm. like, right. would you would you add, ask some questions? Can we get into some detail of that? Uh, my concerns were, uh, I've been approached today by uh, several folks about the flea market and the gun show primarily. Uh, you know, I was under the assumption, if that's the way of saying it, that we were going to be working with the other vendors or the other uh, or lease people with the, uh, with the understanding that we would try to accommodate all of this. We were going to do volleyball in addition to instead of in replacement of. And my concerns with the floor is that, you know, it's not going to be something that we can take up and down. It's, right. it's not an easy process. It's not designed to be taken up and down. So that's going to limit us 
drastically on what else can be done at the facility, and that's and that's a concern of mine because uh, you know I know as a, a small business owner, they they have to plan ahead just like we do, and even though we're talking about leveling the floor and which would improve uh, the chances of us being able to do both, uh, that doesn't really give them much notice. So I'm really concerned about that because some of these things are going to happen in January or try to happen in January. And if, and if we're not going to allow these things to happen, then we need to go ahead and be able to tell them that. Now. Right. And, and we intend to do that to give the uh, clear cut answer as soon as possible. Um, but some of it, as I mentioned to you earlier, uh, some of it we don't have applications for yet. I mean, we get the applications. The first step that we'll take is we'll look at the calendar and see what the, you know, what's going on there. And that's, that's not different than we've always done. You know, they, they have provided us with the dates to make sure the facility is available. Obviously, it's no secret. I mean, if you're going to be playing volleyball there, it's going to tighten the schedule. I mean, it's going to limit the dates that um, it would be available for the other activities. Um, the only thing I would tell you is uh, to be very straightforward is uh, it's, it's my recommendation to the city that we change the use of that arena to make it more effective for our city. And that is my recommendation is to make volleyball the priority. So not to uh, exclude the other organizations from still using it. I'm hopeful that we can, uh, but to be very straightforward, if there's a conflict between volleyball and that, volleyball will take precedence. That's that's my recommendation. So, uh, I guess some of that is hard. It's it's not really possible for us to say until that you know yay or nay until they give us the application and let us know what date they're looking at. Uh, the other thing that will be a factor until we get the floor leveled is um, vehicles in there. You know, with the floor, you can have foot traffic there, and it's not going to do damage. But you're not going to be able to drive, you know, fire trucks in there anymore, and other and other large vehicles like that. So that could exclude, you know, some of the use of that. Um, there are other facilities that that could be used. Um, but anyway, a long way to say. I hope we can accommodate all, but let me make that clear. I mean, my my statement from day one is that I feel like we can use the facility better for volleyball. I think it adds more for our youth, and it's better for our city. Um, it, but I, that may, may cause some exclusions. We may not be able to accommodate every event. But as far as giving them an answer, all they need to do is submit the application, tell us a date, and we can give them an answer. Mr. Mayor, are we for sure on the, the floor removal uh, about the difficulty and how that, how that would work yet? I, again, I mean, we don't have the, the floor comes in next week or in, in within the next couple weeks. Well, we, we have uh, we know that it's um, 516 pieces, and we know that it's not something that's going to be practical for us to pick up and put down a lot. It, it can be picked up and put back down. Uh, we're hopeful that the um, you know the crystal ball in January that we can do that. Um, but it's uh, just being very straightforward again, it's not something we're going to pick up and put down frequently. It's 516 pieces. Does that include the entire seven courts, yeah. or is that just per court? I understand that's the total. Okay. This, the crystal ball is listed as a, a, that's the only event that's listed that will happen in January. Just to answer Auburn Hill's question, um, like I said, I don't know about the West Camps or how they would do the parks, but um, also during the tournaments, all seven courts would be used by the set of legacy during, during tournaments. During the tournament. But during normal days of three, there would be always be three rep courts open. I was just wondering if it was possible, just say for an event like a gun show or a flea market, to utilize, to not utilize the inner bowl, which would have, I think, four courts on the inner bowl, and just take up the pieces on the outer bowl, which was three courts, which would be, I guess, a, a lot less pieces, almost half. If that would be feasible, I, I, it's just something I wish that we could look at. I right. wish there was a way that we could accommodate everything. Well, I'm, I'm committed, and, and I know Wes Brown will be too. We're we're committed to try to accommodate everything. But again, I don't want to be misunderstood. I'm just being straightforward with everyone tonight. It's not something that we're going to pick up and put out every week. It, it, won't, it will not be that. So, um, you know, we will certainly try to accommodate. And like Honor and Hale ask. We, we will quickly give a straight answer, whether it's a yes or no answer, when we get the applications. Do we have any idea how many man hours it takes to do that? Uh, it's, this is new. We've never done this before. I, uh, I know volleyball season has to have a limit at the beginning and the end, and I'd like to at least know that. 
Yeah. And when we could stop it or maybe take the floor up for the three months it's not available. I mean, I, I don't know how long it is. And, and, and see October what through May. Okay. And see what events we don't, that we're not doing the cause of it. And just look a, bit, a little bit deeper into it. Right, and which go deeper into as far as what specifically would you like? Just the events that, uh, that that we've had in the past, what's been planned. Uh, I haven't been around that long. Really, the only conflicts, I, I think I can answer some of that tonight. Really, the only conflicts is the flea market and the gun shows. And, uh, and as far as a revenue standpoint, uh, 5500 a month is replacing the revenue from a city perspective. We're actually just that alone, and we're getting more revenue than we made off of both of those events. Or all of those the Brooks, what is the, uh, the the deal we did last year for veterans? Not the, not the luncheon, but uh... well, that was a that was a special event that our group. Okay, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not an annual thing. <clears throat> so it would be just like everybody else. We we had to apply to make sure the day was open. Right. Those yeah. kinds. Of and a lot of those things, like if it's just foot traffic, there is no kind. Con- you don't have to remove the floor. Okay. So a lot of those, there's there is no conflict. It's mainly when you're uh, driving vehicles or things like that and driving. Vehicles. Someone, uh, Mr. Hoots, is raising his hand. It, board, is it okay if we just allow everybody yeah. to speak? Yes, please. We don't have to go through doing, you know, approving that. Is that all right? Sure. Please come forward. I'm Charlie Hoots. I two two four three Carrollton Cove. Most of y'all know me from the news media for 35 years, but I'm here on behalf of my neighborhood. Uh, <clears throat> I've had 50 calls today uh, because. What we were told several months ago when this first came up is totally different now. We were promised all these three aldermen over here that our arena, nothing was going to change. You'd have your flea markets, you would have the gun shows, anything else that was going there. And the only problem it might be is maybe once in a while you might have a scheduling conflict. Now all of a sudden the day of, you're getting ready to sign a contract with this group to do this stuff. And they're telling folks, we never had an intention ever of removing those floors. Those floors are going to go down permanent. So basically what it is, is if that's the idea, and what you're saying tonight, Mayor, I mean, no disrespect, you know, I, and you know, you've not been in this discussion, so I, don't, I didn't know. That's discussion. right. You're quoting yeah. it. You did not hear that. I never right. said that. Yeah. So. But I mean, and what you're saying is it was never your intention no, to, 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 right. to take this to take this floor, right? That's not what I said. No, what I said is that it's not going to be practical for us to take the floor up frequently. We can, as I said, we can take the floor up, and we're going to try to accommodate all the, uh, the functions there. But what I'm saying tonight is it's not something we're going to be able, it's not practical to take the floor up on like a weekly basis or something right. like that. So, yeah, there are times throughout the year, like I'll give you an example. Let's say that, let's just use the flea market. Let's say the flea market calls and uh, they want to use it in July, you know, after the volleyball season is over. That may be something we can pull the floor up and accommodate that. But I can't make statements based on, I don't have the applications yet. We don't know what the date is. Well, I mean, you know, with the flea market, it's been there for the same weekend for the last up 10 years. Right, but but we're, yeah, Charlie, we're going to change them. We we are. It's a proposed change. Right. It's a change to bring volleyball to the arrangement. Right. To change, you have to change. Yeah, and I mean, you know, you said we're we're blazing a new trail, but it doesn't necessarily mean you have to kick off everybody else on the horse on the way to do it. Did I say that? Well, I mean, it, it, you know, that's what's happening here. No, it's not. That's okay, not. well, I mean, it's semantics. We're, we're disagreeing on words. But, I mean, at the end of the day, we're, we're going to have a floor down here that he can't use for his flea market that three or four or 5,000 people that, that weekend go there to the flea market in our right. neighborhoods. And, they, I mean, I mean, I never go to a volleyball game. I don't have any kids playing volleyball. And there's a lot of people just like me. But our taxpayers are going into the city, and we Certainly. like things. We like the amenities that we can go see, too. And so, you know, uh, before it was like we were reassured that those things are going to be taken into consideration, and now it's not. Volleyball has priority, and I, you know, and I understand that. I, I mean, you know, it, it's it's truth. I mean, that's it. you're trying to make things better, and I appreciate that. Your sign that you're putting around the stop sign, I mean, the street and everything, that's, that's wonderful. But I mean, at the end of the day, we have one last thing for the little old lady who lives in Colonial Hills to go do if she can't go to her flea market because she's not going to go to a volleyball. Yeah, I probably and, won't, just FYI, I probably won't go to the volleyball game either. Yeah, and, and, but, and, but, I, but I know it's good for the city. Yeah, and it, and it is, but what I'm saying is, is I mean, you know, we were misled. And that's right. what, well, and, let's, and, let's and, and not by you, I'm saying by some of the other people. Okay, well that's a discussion you need, may need to have one-on-one with them, but you can go back and watch the video. I said the same thing tonight that I said the entire time, that we're going to try to accommodate 
the other events that are there, but volleyball is going to be a priority. That's that's what I said from day one. That's what I'm saying tonight. So I've not misled anyone. So well, I think if, if if it was if people knew in in Colonial Hills and Carriage Hills what was happening tonight, this place would have been running over people because they would not they would say I'd rather have a flea market than a volleyball court. Well, and I, I mean, and, and you know, and that's where I, we, I realize we're just part of the city, you know, the citizens here, but we shouldn't be overlooked. And, I mean, and that, unfortunately, that's the perception a lot of people have in our neighborhood over here. And I hear a lot of it because I'm over in the neighborhood watching with her along with Ronnie. And we hear it all the time. So that's the reason I'm here tonight. I, I mean, you know, I know you're trying to do good, but we don't want to get lost in the, in the wake while you're trying to do good. And, and I'm glad that you came forward. And uh, I really want to talk about that for just a minute. I know we're getting lengthy, but something that has amazed me, I've got to let everybody know this. <clears throat> Anyone that's heard me speak since 2013 to here has heard me say how important it is that we revitalize the original business district. I said it tonight. We do that, and you, know, you speak of the people that are that are here in this part of our city. Um, I wonder if that is the majority of the people over here, though, because it seems that every time that I try to do something, like I said earlier, to bring customers back, that, which that's how you help the original business district. The problem with our original business district in the mid 90s, people started leaving. That's when it started. Mid 90s, when Goodman Road developed, everything started moving that way. All right. Um, so what you got to do is you got to bring customers back. We can be successful in the southeastern part of the city and be successful on the northwest part of the city too. But the problem we have right now is we've got to get more traffic back to the to the northwest part of the city. But it's just. Again, it's, and I, I'm going to try to smile when I'm telling you this, but it's amazing to me that every time I try to change something that would do just that, there's a group that comes forward and they don't like that. You know, it seems that it could be volleyball, it could be anything. Anything that is changed is opposed by the northwestern part of our city. And again, I'm going to say a, a ridiculously simple statement. You got to decide: Do we want change? I mean, do you, do you are you happy with the with the business district on the northwest part of the city? I'm not. I think it can be more. And but then you still want to get lost in the process. I, I'm, we're not trying to lose anybody. What I'm saying though is we're trying to do things that do help and do bring nicer things back to this part of the city. But it seems that there's a group every time we do that that fights it. It could be volleyball. It's the banners, you know, we put the banners up, painted the mast arms, some people didn't like that. I mean, it's like everything we paved State Line Road in 2014, people complained about that. That was the first dollar that I spent as mayor on streets was State Line Road. We spent $300,000 out of a million dollar budget on one street. And that was to support my goals of, of revitalizing the original business district. And people complained about that, surprisingly. They complained that it took us too long. It's just. My point is that I would ask everyone to consider that. You know, if you're happy with the way it is now, then let's scrap volleyball and let's go back to having flea markets a couple times a year. We want to, but we want to have both. Why can't you do both? We're I mean, trying to. We're it, trying to. But, but I mean, initially that was the plan, and now that's been scrapped. So it, it's not been yeah. scrapped. I'm just telling you that. So can we get a commitment tonight that we're going to have flea markets? There, as I said, there's things that we don't know yet. We're right. blazing the trail. There's things we've not done volleyball in the city yet. But I can tell you right now, I mean, anyone reasonably would, would see that, yeah, it is going to it's gonna make it more challenging. There's no doubt. And, and I would say that it's probably going to be tough to have the flea markets from October to um, May. But if we could, I mean, I guess the reason I'm here, and I understand what you're saying, and we hear the complaints too. And But I also have to remind you with those complaints is we probably have the biggest population of actual people who go to the polls and vote. These older people and that kind of stuff, they actually go vote every election. And that kind of stuff. So those are the people who, you know. Well, I'm not. Well, I'm not. You know, I know that that's not what you're insinuating. I'm not doing it for votes. I'm doing it yeah. for what's the big picture benefit of the city. And, and I, I, I appreciate that. And I mean, but, and then the reason I'm the reason I'm here, I'm not here for any other reason that is the fact that we were misled. You know, that's the reason I'm here. Tonight. Who misled you? Uh, we were misled by the information that was put out there that we're going to have who uh, and where. Well, I mean, Ronnie, George, every one of those posts they put out said. You know, this is not going to get rid of one. It's, we're going to have everything's going to be included. There may just be a few times that there's a with the conflict. And then today, all of a sudden, no, that's not even on the picture anymore at all. Well, again, I would, challenge, 
again, I appreciate that, but if you'll go back and watch the videos, I said basically the same thing tonight that I've said. Now, granted, there's been some more information that's come available to us since those prior meetings, but uh, I've not misled anyone. I've said from day one that we want volleyball to be a priority and that we're hopeful to do the other events too, but that if there's a conflict between volleyball and that, yeah, volleyball's going to be take precedent. So it's, it's, that's never been said before today, because I think if it was, I think there would have been a bigger group. To well, you can go to his public record. You can go back and watch the videos. Oh, well, I, I don't. I'm not disagreeing with you. But if you have, if if you feel like Alderman Payne or Alderman Hale has misled you, that's a conversation. Uh, they speak for themselves. It, it takes a majority to speak for the full board and for the city, and that's not been said by the city. But we count on these guys to have. Or, you know, our information to us. I, I would cost you though, just to be be fair, uh, your Facebook page circulates a lot of bad information. And I'm just telling you, um, there's a lot of things that are on that page. I, I look at it, y'all invited me to be a friend back in the spring. Yeah, neighborhood so, watch page referred to, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the information that's on there is very misleading to the citizens. So if there's something that's circulating on there, that is not official do uh, uh, language from the city. Right. So, well, what I'm, re I'm not referring to the, the, the whatever the chat is. I'm referring to official things. Whenever the first it first came up, this is what it says. Oh no, no, that's not our intentions at all. And, and to do that, and I mean, you know, uh, and that's the reason I'm here. I don't have a dog in this hunt. I don't. I don't own a flea market. I don't own a dog show. You know, I, I'm here because I got a lot of calls from a lot of people in our neighborhood who said, yeah. "Hey, this is not what we were told. What's the deal with it?" Well, I can tell you this: uh, if we uh, if we could pack all the people that are behind this volleyball program. This building wouldn't hold them. I can tell you that. How many of those people live in actually in the South Haven? Are they from all over? You're talking about? No, I'm talking about South Haven residents. Okay. Yeah. And and again, it's it's um, we're trying to accommodate both, but then again, uh, like a lot of the questions that you've heard tonight, I said I'm not really sure about that. This is new, so there's right. some things that. But yeah. once you sign this contract, are we locked in? Then I mean, so we can't figure it out later. <laughs> I mean, until 180 days. Yeah, but I mean, May of 2018. Yeah, it is. It is time to make a decision if we're going to bring volleyball to the arena. That, right. Because I mean, you know, you can't expect a guy like with the flea market to say, "Okay, I don't have a place to have a flea market for six months," and then say, oh, "Okay, that didn't work out. You can come back." Because by then, you know, they've gone somewhere else. No, and, and like I told Alderman Hale, we'll give them a straight answer on the dates. All we need is an, an updated application to know the dates, and then we can give a straight answer. So I, I definitely understand that. No, we're not going to hold anyone up. We'll give a yay or a nay depending on what date is requested. And, and we'll, we're going to do our best to accommodate all and work around it. But, uh, but let me be clear, uh, there's been no misleading from day one. I've made the statement that I think the arena could be better used. And, uh, and, and I think volleyball is the answer. We considered a lot of things. Uh, we considered bringing rodeo back. You know, there's some people that wanted to bring, and, uh, but there's some other uh, additional expenses that had to be done to the facility to make it uh, conducive to that. So. We felt like volleyball was the best option, and but yeah, I'm not, I've not misled anyone. I've said from day one that I think it should be better. You could be better used with volleyball, and uh, I do want to accommodate all. But if it comes down to volleyball and flea market, if it's up to me, it's going to be volleyball because I think that's best for the city. But again, I, I do want you to leave and take this with you when you when you leave. Remember that there is a group of not everybody. There's a group of people in Colonial Hills. A group, not Kelowna Hills, a group that everything that we do, they don't like it. And it's like, I feel like sometimes like I'm throwing a life vest out. I'm, I'm trying to say we've got to revitalize the original part of the city. And I throw that life vest out, and it just gets kicked back to me. Well, if you remember, I'm the guy who invited you to join our group. I said, because I want you to be involved. Yes. Because, I mean, I do believe you have good ideas. But, you know, and the only reason I'm here tonight is, like I said, straightforward is just, this is what we were told, this is what we were expecting, and it's not happening. That's why I'm here. Yeah. And well, it sounds like that, and, and I don't know, and I don't know if this is an appropriate place to get into that discussion, but uh, this, you may, uh, may be comment that it was a post. It wasn't my post, so whoever did the post, maybe you want to meet with them one-on-one -on -one and ask them about that. But I've tried to be as straightforward with you as I can tonight. Okay. I'd like to reply really quick. Charlie, we discussed it for probably 30 minutes outside my wife's studio uh, several right. weeks ago. And I was pretty clear that ideally we would, I would love, we should be able to do everything. I'm referring back to when it first started. But, I, the, but, that, I, don't, but I, I never gave you a definite. I also mentioned to you that there are also <coughs> hopefully other places that if for some reason the, we could not accommodate the flea market, there were other facilities within the city or even the county that the flea market or gun shows could probably go. 
that we have places. I mean, you have the Lander Center, it's got a whole convention center. You've got, you know, and if you remember, I told you then, I said, well, remember, that's different than what the original conversation was, and it's probably going to stir up a hornet's nest when it happens. But I told you, but originally, right. originally, and you know this, that the arena was never built to be a trade show facility. Thank you. I mean, that was never the, that was never the beginning. That was never what it was meant to be. We just had to do that. We had to accommodate it in order to make some sort of revenue out of the building because it was just sitting there vacant, empty, not being, ever being used. And the whole idea, the whole process of all of this was to get generate more traffic and get more use out of a out of a building than only you know twenty days, thirty days out of the year. It's a comfort thing for these older people. Over there. And I understand, and I, I don't want the flea market to go. I'm gonna have to explain to my mother later on the night, you know, <laughs> why they've gotten rid of the flea market. And I have to say, well, we didn't really get rid of the flea market. You know, we're we're doing our best. But that's all I can tell you. We're, well, we're going to do our but best. I, but at the end of the day, that's what's happened. I mean, it, you know, it, it, it can be that we, you know, we, we can't remove the floors. I mean, this action causes I, this I, ho I hope not. I hope to find a way that maybe we can do it. I hope you can. But that being said, I can't make you a promise that, yes, that's going to happen. I'm just one person. Right. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, y'all. Uh, Alderman, Alderman Kelly. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. um, I think what you're uh, referring to, and I'm not going to talk directly, so if you want okay. to have, please feel free to do so, um, is a lot of information was presented to us today, and we had very little time to go through it. Like, I, I'll be honest, I did not have time to read the contract in its entirety as much as I would like to. A few things jumped out of me that I had a lot of questions on. Uh, for example, under Rule 16 F or H, we can cancel events, we will not relinquish control of the facility, we can also eject people, but on Rule 18, they have quiet, what's the term? Uh, quiet possession, which technically under most legal jargon means the leasor is not allowed to go with the leasee. So there's a few questions in there that I personally had uh, that I wanna make sure that there is not confusion on. And I think that's where a lot of the issues from the people that I've, I've heard with, because uh, Surprisingly, this is the one issue that I've heard from more of my constituents than I have anything else with the city, which I love hearing from people. That's what I'm here to do. Um, but this really hit a nerve with people. So personally, I would like to have more time to get these questions answered. So what I would like to do is make a motion to table this for at least a few days. If we have to call a special meeting, so be it. So we can come back on it. That way we can have a lot of these questions answered. Okay, I respect that. We can certainly do that. Um, but just to make sure you're aware, we, we have, and sometimes I feel like this gets lost in the shuffle, but there's an enormous amount of work that goes home before we get here. Right. I mean, and this was something, again, it would have been on the agenda and you would have had this had we had it already. Uh, but we're waiting on a, a signature from them and also then to let us know what date they wanted to occupy the facility. And then Nick had to review that as well. So. That's why you relate getting it, but no. And as you know, I, anytime we put something on there the day of, I always tell y'all, hey, look, why we didn't have it on there, right. and that's why I'm letting you know because there, there's an enormous amount of work in, in discussions before it gets to you. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I I certainly don't want anyone uh, to feel like they've not had a chance to review the details of the contract. Um, but I would like to know what what are the comments that what what are the comments? You said you've heard from a lot of people about about it, what's the issue? Uh, the primary one, or what Mr. Hoots was referring to tonight as far as doing those things, and I know that we all want to make sure that we appease as many people as we can, and we're also wise enough to know that no matter what decision, you're not going to make it happen. Uh, with that, though, uh, you know, it's just some of the language in there that we weren't thrilled about, and that did seem to, or was different from what I was originally intending, you know, my understanding is on me. Uh, so that's why we we're just looking for some, you know, well, for me personally, I'm asking just for a little bit more time to have some of those questions there, but the biggest thing is people want to have these facilities, or not the facilities, but the events, you know, flea market gun shows, things, because more, a more broad consensus of people go to those than will volleyball. And I'm in 100% agreement that volleyball will be a huge boost to our area, and I'm in complete support of that. I just want to make sure that the wording is there. Uh, we're speaking of wording on one of the last pages. Nick, would you would you circle what? Yeah, I'll look at it all. I mean, yeah. So 18, he, his okay. question about 18, and then what, what, what are the other ones? Uh, well, just the, the other ones specifically were Rule 16, F through H. Uh, I just, it seemed, for my lack of legal understanding, a contradiction. 
I just want to make sure that it's not. Like I said, I didn't have time to read every single word. It might have resolved itself. Uh, in the addendum B, one of the last ones uh, says, Lisi and Lisor agree to work in good faith for all other city events for the South End Arena. And I know that's kind of the clause right there that's going to allow these events to continue. However, we live in a day and age to where the words of, and I hate the one plus under this thing, but politicians are not trusted. And so I, what I think would help a lot of people feel better is if we could even get some written dates like, you know, in, on March 16th, I'm just throwing the date out there, March 16th through the 18th, we can hold this event. If they can see something on paper, it might help alleviate some of those fears. Yeah, well, that's a, and I get what you're saying, but that's a moving target. That's going to be hard to put in a contract. That's something that is done from an operational standpoint with our parks office. So it's just like it's happening now. When someone calls, they have an application, they give the date, because that's a moving target. There's not really a way that you could put, you know, in the contract, these dates are going to be available throughout the year. Right. You don't know that. It's every calendar year is different, and there's different events that come and go throughout the year. So I, unless you know of a, to me that sounds very rigid. I don't know how you would do that. Just um, yeah, I mean, I, I work with the board so we can, I can, you know, make sure I agree with more than mayor and city. Um, we can address those concerns and, and see I, that will require, uh, to your point, Arvin, that will require giving the parks department and seeing hey, what dates can we have guarantee. Um, I don't know the, I, I don't know those dates. I can work with them on that. Uh, but your question on paragraph 18, um, as far as plot possession, I, I can explain that in more detail um, as far as how that's worded and why. And so I'd be happy to do that as well and uh, uh, obviously address any questions anybody has or anything the board or mayor wants to see added or parts department wants to see added, I'd be happy to look into it and um, address what I can through a lease and to where you all are comfortable, to, um, everybody's comfortable with it or, or not. So um, but I'd be happy to sit down and, and start reviewing questions y'all have or any comments you have and uh, look into it. So, can we do that now? You can try, I just don't know, I mean, yeah, I mean, some of them, I'd have to, you get cold with some of them, but I can try. Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't know if the, it's fair to answer the questions as far as the dates. And again, I'm not, we can certainly table it. I support whatever the board chooses to do. I'm just saying, let's move forward. I mean, like a lot of that times, things get drug out unnecessarily. Mm -hmm. Uh, so if there's questions that we can go ahead and give to Nick tonight, he can go ahead and be addressing that and then uh, provide you with other details. Or... And, and to be fair, some of these questions are right to be asked. The, the legal questions are I can answer. So the, the parks logistics questions, and I'm not trying to, I, I can't answer those as far as removing the floor. I don't, I don't know those those answers and, and won't know those answers. But to answer your questions on, on certain provisions, I'll be happy answering those questions um, tonight, tomorrow, whenever y'all uh, later on whenever you have those questions for me so but if you'll go ahead and uh tell you said 18 go ahead and will you make some notes on, on all of them yeah, just look at them. i'll look at it all and see i'm just and i can i can get with him i, I get with Arthur kelly trying to ask that <coughs> question and, and look at it and like i said i may there may be something i need to re review on that as well so um i just want to make a couple things clear just volleyball idea and all that's that we've already discussed and agreed as a city is going to be good for the city that's 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 a done deal that's it's going to be good if it's half of what our tennis expansion has exploded then we'll be looking we'll be looking okay I promise everybody that the the building itself is going to be a fluid building I guess if you want to call it that we're going to try to do as much as we can I understand that but I just want to make sure that if we can figure out a way to do it that we that we accommodate as many people as we can until we can get to that point of the solid floor uh, the division however we're going to do it because uh, the public doesn't know it for most uh, for most instances what we talk about up here is it's a done deal once we vote on it, but it's not locked in stone. We, we, we can change things. Uh, our whole purpose is to, is to vote on what we think is best for the city, for all the citizens. And to say that we're never going to make a mistake is, is, you know, it's not going to happen. So with that being said, Mayor, I, I, I want to I kind of piggyback what you said about uh, the complaints. Uh, 
one of the things I hear all the time, especially during election season, was everything goes to the east side. Everything's over at Snow. We can't get nothing over here on the side. It's a, it's a group of people. And now, and now we're getting something on the east side or the west side. And the first thing that it's done is looked at negatively. Right. And I, I don't, I can understand from the flea market side and the gun show and anything else that we do, but this is going to be a positive thing for the west side of town. Uh, it's going to bring growth. It's going to bring increased uh, revenue to the restaurants and uh, our sister city is going to enjoy that as well because they're going to be closest for most instances. But like you said, the traffic is going to be here and that's going to be good for everybody. Uh, from Domino's up the street to uh, the hotels that will be coming because the, the growth will be there. And, and I just didn't want to make sure or I wanted to make sure that it's, I'm not looking at it as a negative <coughs> comments by what I said. I want to. I just wanted to address the concerns that were brought to me. Yes, sir. Thank you. And it is. It is important to note that we continually are recruiting restaurants <coughs> to come back, and they have their business models. But it's traffic flows, <laughs> and when you bring more customers to the area, it's just simple <laughs> economics. So, but thank you for saying that. We have Representative Henley with us. Uh, I'm assuming you want to speak. Would you like to come forward, please? Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Alderman. I, I appreciate the opportunity. Um, I live at 2128 Brookhaven Drive, which is actually a cove, um, the very end of Brookhaven, but there's a Brookhaven Cove, so that's the reason that it's numbered as such. Um, about hmm, three quarters of a mile from the arena. Um, so the first, <coughs> I just want the aldermen to know how much I appreciate what you do and I hope that you know just how much authority that you have if you are willing to exercise it and I need uh, just some clarification because I do live across the street from the arena um, as far as I know the arena originally was called uh, the South Haven's public use facility or something of that nature when it was first built is that right the equestrian center when it was built, it was called the Equestrian Center. It was built as an Equestrian Center. Uh, well, on paper with the city, as far as the property title, is it the South Haven, South Haven Public Use Facility? Is that what it is? Well, all, all facilities are public use facilities. Right, so this was originally and is currently within the parks purview, Parks Department's purview? The Parks Department oversees all the recreational type facilities. So this was built as a recreational facility. Mm -hmm. So our Parks and Rec Department do oversee all the uh, uses, the lease it, you know, leasing and use of the uh, recreational facilities. So Parks and Recreation Facility for citizens of South Haven. Correct, or, or anybody else from outside the city that want to use, yes, that want to use the facilities. That's very broad in our city. You know, we have many facilities. Some are used uh, for many different purposes. Right. They're, they're, as you would know, they're weddings at the Snowden House. It's very diverse, so okay. uh, it is designed, obviously, for the citizens of South Haven, but, uh, but yeah, it's fair to say that there are citizens from outside the city that do request to use the facilities as well. And I know just in general, my the example I have is with the public library. I love the public library. I use it um, frequently. Um, but when I have to live in a parking lot in Jackson, I have to pay to use the Jackson Public Library. The people in Jackson use their library for free because it's their library. But I have to pay. I pay I uh, would say, well, uh, they pay zero, I pay $25 for one year to use their library. So 
with these type facilities, public use, recreation facilities for our citizens. Is there a differential in cost or um, de depending upon if you happen to not live in the 71 or 72 zip code? Do they pay more or do we get to use things free? Um, they do pay more. Like for example, the Recreational Baseball League and the Recreational Football League if you go to the website and check the registration fees, there's a, a price for citizens of the city. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with the Forever Young program, if you don't live inside the city, you do pay more for all that, correct? Okay, so with uh, the volleyball, we have uh, three courts open for the public, right? Four of seven will be tournament, three will be for public. Well, not just tournament, it's used for, for, uh, for right. the Recreational League also, which is a public city league, so. So yeah, all of them during the week, all seven are used for public use. Free. Uh, well, they pay an entry fee like every other sport does. Yeah. Like if you sign up to play recreational baseball or recreational football in the city, uh, you pay a, a registration fee. Everyone does that. So, yeah, there'll be some type of fee for volleyball as well. <coughs> okay. And we, but we have three courts open for public. That was, you said there would be four of seven and then three reserved for the public. So those three courts that are supposed to be reserved for the public, meaning the citizens of South Haven that pay taxes here, will they be able to use those courts for free? You're, you're misunderstanding the comment of public use. Let me I clarify am. that for you. Let me, let me help you. Um, during the week, if it's not a tournament, all seven courts are used for public use, even though the proposed contract with the Soto Legacy would be to operate the development league or the recreational league. That's a city league. They're doing that as a service to us so we don't have to hire our own personnel to do that. Right. Uh, that. That is for the citizens of South Haven. So anybody that wants to sign up and play in that league uh, during Monday through Friday, they will play in that league. So those four courts would be used for that. What I'm talking about when I say open to the public, the other three courts would be something that's open for someone outside the league, like someone that's not, this one just wants to practice there, wants to come play there. That's what. That's the difference between. Right. Well, but will they have to pay? Yes. But to go to the skate park, which is also around the corner from my house, that is not for <coughs> for fee, correct? Uh, I don't think anyone pays at the skate park. Exactly. Right. 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 That. That's what I mean by open to the public, and I and. and don't understand. I already know the answers. Which answer? The answer to will they be able to use it for free? <clears throat> Which Next. is what it's, is that answer? You just gave it. It was no. Right. They will pay a fee. What, okay. what you're not understanding is that. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Then the next one schedules. Schedules for the tournament. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a contract, signing a contract tonight that was not on the agenda, which I understand by your uh, procedures. There, there is nothing here that was done unethically, illegally, but just maybe not in the best interest of necessarily serving the citizens. I understand more effective for the city. You've said that many, many times, more effective for the city. And it will be. It will increase the city budget bottom line. But what we're talking about is activities, opportunities available for the citizens that are within the general vicinity that they will actually use. I get that the city will make money off of this and it'll help you buy prettier signs. Let's, I'm going to stop you right there. No, ma'am. That's not what this is about. Okay. Since 1974, the first time that I paid an entry fee to play baseball in the South Haven Recreational League, right. my dad paid, I think, $30 back then. Okay? Right. Absolutely. This is, what, this is what you don't understand. I would encourage you to listen a little bit better so you can understand. Mm. It takes money to operate a league. When you, If you just have a pickup game where you're going to take a group of people and go play left field ball at Donnie Woodsfield, 
it costs nothing. You have no umpires, you, you have no coaches. Mm -hmm. you're, you get your water jug and a bat and glove and you go have a heyday. If you're gonna play in an organized league where you have to have umpires, you have to have officials, you have extra expenses. So what you're trying to suggest that every park is exactly the same as far as a fee to the people that use it, and that's not true. It takes money to operate the league. So the volleyball league is gonna have, they're gonna have officials, there, there's expenses that come with that that do have to be funded. So this is nothing new. I mean, at Cherry Valley, you know, with football uh, for 49 years, uh, again, for baseball at Cherry Valley, I think it started in 69, uh, there's been an entry fee, even before it was a city. It has to be that way because you have other expenses to operate the league. Oh, I absolutely understand that. It's not the paper side. I, I wasn't, I wasn't even, I wasn't talking about sports. Well, that, I think everybody in here is wondering what are you that's talking about. That's the point about? that I'm missing. That, Does that anyone I, in this room understand her, what she's talking, what are you talking about? I'm talking about. We have a time about, issue, please move on quickly, let's go. I'm talking about, you asked, are we happy, are we happy with what's going on in the arena? That you asked that already. Are you happy? Right, what's I going did on ask within that. the arena? I've asked many people that. Right. How many of them live in the West End? I've asked people throughout the city. What see that's that's the issue that you seem to make and you've made in previous uh, approaches to this board and to me. This is actually the first time can I've I been to this podium. Finish? Excuse me. There's other communication sources, we made that very clear. I address the needs of the entire city, okay? I look out for the benefits of the entire city. So when, when I speak of listening to citizens, I'm speaking to every citizen in the city. I have people that live in Kelowna Hills. I grew up down the street from where you live. I, I moved there in 1968. I'm, I'm assuming, that I, I think that's it's pretty safe to say that was before you were born. Um, I'm very familiar with Kelowna Hills. Uh, I'm very familiar with every subdivision in this city. I listen to everyone in this city. And I can tell you that everyone in Kelowna Hills does not agree with you, okay? There are people in Kelowna Hills, you've made it clear you're an anti-tax and anti-fee person. You're a radical political right wing. That's what you are. You've made it clear. Everyone in the state of Mississippi knows that now, okay? Most people in the city of South Haven are not that okay our goal is not to kill every fee if our goal is to kill every tax and every fee we can quit paving the roads we can go back to gravel roads we can end all the uh, parks and sports in the city we don't charge anyone for anything that's not what the majority of people in this city want okay and that's not just people that live in the 3672 as you suggested many times on social media it's people that live all throughout this city okay you need to get this message before you leave tonight. The people of South Haven need you to go to Jackson and do your job. We have roads falling apart throughout this state. Our teachers don't make enough money. The highway control is not covered up. We have people that are mentally sick. We have people that are mentally sick that are in jails tonight mm -hmm. because the state of Mississippi cannot properly fund mental health care. You have a lot of big issues to worry about. You need to turn your view to Jackson and do the job that we hired you to do and stay out of the city business. But I've answered your questions, but I'm never gonna answer it the way you want me to answer it because you want me to say that it's a public facility that nobody pays for and it does not work like that. Most people in this city want things to do that benefit their kids, give them opportunities for education. Our parks do that. You're anti-park. Most people here are not, and that's your issue. So I, I give you one more comment. I've never spoken against, actually I've never, ever, ever spoken out against the park tax. Never. Yes, you have. No, sir. You want me to report it? I have it. I have it. I have it. <laughs> I've never said we should not have it. Never. And I am not anti-park, but that's not what we're here to talk about. Well, let's go ahead and wrap it up because we got other city business to talk about. Who will be the key holder for, sir? If you can't have a seat, well, time's up. Mayor said he wants to move on. Yeah. Let's let her ask her last question, then you'll need to take a seat, Ms. Hamlin. Okay. The key holder for, for the building currently, when you go to use the building, you know, we have offices in the sides of the building and we actually discussed the wind job center becoming the administrative building it somehow possibly 
becoming part of that facility when you and I discussed that entire whole parking lot being better utilized and I actually mentioned soccer to you. Right. So I am absolutely not anti-park. I mentioned bringing soccer to our side, indoor soccer, which I understand it costs just like this does. But currently, when you go to use the facility, is it a city employee that operates or oversees the functioning of what it goes on in the building? Yes. So now that the DeSoto legacy is going to uh, pay to utilize the facility, will there no longer be a city employee there as part no, nothing will change with that. So, as far as using the three courts, will that be done through the city person that is there or done through the DeSoto Legacy people? Yes, the city person. It's just like it's done everywhere else. If you want to go take batting practice at the Snowden Cages, you have to call and make a reservation. Right. We have a city employee that takes a call, keeps up with the schedule. And that person is at that facility. Yes. I mean, that's where you contact them. And, sure. Okay. Um, all right. Well, that was and then, all right. And then one, let me respond real quickly. Your, your question about soccer, um, and I, it, again, being staggered with all the discussion that we had about uh, the parks program over the last, uh, last year, I'm surprised that you don't know that there are plans to put soccer at Snowden. There's land right. that's already available. You to told put it there. me that. Right. Standing and, in front of the old Moose Lodge. Right. And then again, your suggestion about the Wind Job Center, you should know this, being a state representative. The that we're Job trying to move that facility because it, it takes money from the city. It costs the city money. They, they're getting. No, that's They're, not the lab. That, no, you're you're way they, misinformed. You need to. No, you told me this that they pay. That's a year ago. There's things that change. Let me answer your question, then we're going to end this. The Wind Job Center, uh, the DeSoto County right now is trying to find a more efficient use of that. Bring in Northwest College to use that. Right, right. The Wind Job Center is going to be used as an employment agency. It is. So it can, it's not going to be used as a park facility. So that's out. I did listen to your ideas. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, and again, like I said earlier, we consider a lot of things. The plan is to bring soccer to the land where we have already available at Snowden. Uh, but we reviewed all the possibilities and we feel like volleyball is the best solution. And that's, that's a city decision. Right. Uh, I have no, I mean, no discussion there. I just wondered about key holders and the Key holder would be a city employee like everything else. I think it would help you seriously. And I don't mean to, I know this sounds condescending. And I apologize. I'm not trying to be condescending to you, but you need to do. You need to tune your ears in to the truth instead of the willful ignorance that you choose to listen to with some of the people that you surround yourself with. All the answers to your questions. Uh, that, that's a simple phone. That's that's something you can call anyone in the city. They can answer that question. Well, we didn't know about this until today. We've been talking about this since June the 12th. I started well, talking about volleyball. This, this contract. We didn't know this was happening. Yeah. But again, you elect officials, and that's, that's another thing that, I, in my opinion, you have wrong. You elect the people that are up here to make decisions. It's, they're not going to bring every detail or every contract to get your approval, okay? Right. You, you have a voice every four years. If you don't like what I do or you don't like any of these people, it's real simple. You just go cast a vote, and if, if they don't get reelected or I don't get reelected, I'm going to move on and do something else. But until the people, as long as they vote for me and want me, to work for the city, they're relying on me to make decisions. And it's not something that we're going to bring back before you. Like you questioned that with the tourism tax code. We're not going to bring everything back to every, that's not practical. We're not going to do that. That's not how government works. These people are elected by the people of South Haven to make decisions, and that's what they're going to do. Whether, I mean, everybody's not going to agree on every issue. Right. But you seem to, you and your radical right group have a real hard time understanding that. So I would just encourage you, if you want, if you need answers to the city of South Haven, contact me. You have my cell number. Do you have my cell number? Your um, son took it the day we met. Right. You still have it? When we were upstairs here. Right. You have my cell number. You can call me at any time. When we discussed parks. So I'm absolutely not anti-park or anti-fee or any of that. So please do not disparage me. And Alderman Kelly, 
I urge you, please, please, just ask for more time. You all deserve it. And I urge you, and I ask you, before, and we're going to end this, but I'm asking you, please do the job that the city of South Haven and the people in your um, jurisdiction elected you to do. Please go to Jackson and do your job and let these people do theirs. Thank you very much. Thank you. Second. Okay, so we um, we got a motion to table it. Yes, Again, I won't say one more thing. I would encourage you, uh, I certainly respect if there's things about the contract that you don't feel comfortable with, by all means, let's wait, okay? But let me know, let Nick know, we'll get answers to that. We, we certainly have never, and I don't think anybody's suggesting that, but we never put something on the agenda last minute to try to slide anything in. Right. That's never done. Y'all heard me numerous times explain why there was a delay or why you just got it the day of. So by all means, make sure you get all the questions, uh, all your questions answered. But remember one thing, what I said, the people elected you to make a decision and you have to do what you got to do in your wards. I have to be an advocate for what I think is best for the entire city. And I would encourage all of you to consider that and uh, before we um, table this and move on for further action. So we have a motion by Alderman Kelly to table the discussion on, volley, on the volleyball of the Soto Legacy contract. Second, Alderman Hill. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Ayes have it. Motion carries. It will be tabled. Okay, next on the agenda is uh, we did not have, we've had, we didn't have anybody else on the citizens' agenda that wanted to speak. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak? Mr. Johnny Adams, please come forward. I didn't know I was speaking, but everybody just loosen up and make fun. <laughs> this, this is just a Tuesday, Johnny. I know. I, we do this two Tuesdays a month. I probably don't need that speaker. Hey, Christy, you look beautiful. I've been, I've been here 49 years. I see a couple of my classmates, Ray Ashmore, and know most of these aldermen. I heard about this today. I apologize. I'm a little bit hoarse because my Memphis Tigers have been winning football games, so you can get right. But... I came up here today really, really concerned because of a couple of Facebook posts. Because Facebook's the truth. Right? <laughs> but anyway, after walking in and speaking with our elected alderman, John Wheeler and Ronnie Hill, I, I had my questions answered that my dad told me. All these guys are businessmen. Whatever creates revenue for the city is what they're going to do. Whatever's best for the city is what they're going to do. If they can keep that flea market and the gun show primarily, they're going to do that and make money off the volleyball. Somebody could write this down. Y'all can find out tonight or tomorrow. If you'll call Ricky Carden at the Lander Center, they take up and down floors, those size pieces constantly. He'll tell you the man hours. You'll have to discuss the cost, but he'll tell you the man hours. So Y'all going to have, is that funny? I mean, he does that oh, yeah. for a living. So Ricky Carden probably could tell you the man hours. They have a lot of events at the Lander Center. I'm just trying to help. Wow. I hope this is rude. No, no, I wasn't trying to be rude. But anyway, sorry. long story short, I just have a couple things. I think getting on in on the front end of the volleyball could be absolutely incredible because everybody's doing baseball. They're doing it in San Antonio. They're doing it in Tunica. They're doing it in Biloxi. They're doing it in Pensacola but they don't do it as well as we do it here. Kind of following South Haven's lead. Excuse me? They're kind of following South Haven's lead. That's right. Yeah. That, that, so I think the volleyball on the front end, I don't. I love to watch volleyball when I'm flipping channels, especially the beach volleyball. But if it's the, team, the female beach volleyball. <laughs> We're not gonna have that here. But, uh, <laughs> I, I think there's room on the, there'll be room for that. But anyway, uh, there, I'm a landlord also, so this is one of my questions. They're, they're renting or leasing, correct? The sort of legacy, they'll be paying rent, 5,500 a month. Yes. So therefore, we're still gonna pay the taxes and insurance on the building, as we would anyway. Yes. Okay, if, and that's where my landlord comes in, if they decide not to pay up the second, third month, how long, uh, city attorney, how long does it take to get that tenant out? Yeah, we have an eviction clause. Okay, the same as, a landlord they tenant. Have, they have a They have one day to pay. Like just okay. Yes. It's a lot. It's it it's a lot easier for a governmental entity than it would be yes. you. 
Tennessee. Well, I, mean, I know it's a lot easier in Mississippi than Tennessee as well, yeah. and I appreciate that. <coughs> the last thing is the security and the police that would might be needed on a weekend event, which will be creating a lot of revenue. I don't want to talk bad about any part of the city, but we have some issues everywhere in the city. But we have more. We have a few more issues in that corridor. Would DeSoto Legacy be paying for the extra security or police, or would that be us? That that would be us. Legally, we can't make uh, DeSoto Legacy pay for police right. under Mississippi law. We can't make a private entity pay for police or fire protection. Right. So that would be all our our expense. Well, that's great. I didn't know I'd be up here, but I appreciate all of y'all. And first and foremost, if you don't think the mayor likes the old side of the highway in Forest Drive in Vicksburg County Country, you just not listen, and he will answer his phone. I've burned it up a few times on some issues, and I appreciate your return my calls. Yes, sir. Thank you. Have a much. great night, and I love South Haven. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, John. We did have one. Did someone else want to speak? My name is Julie Cardosi Haig, and I'm from the South Haven Play Market. And we've had a great relationship with the South Haven people, and we want to stay in South Haven. And we we're hoping that we can continue doing this. I would just ask that when the final vote is in, y'all know for sure if y'all could let us know. Because we do have over 300 vendors that come here to do their show on the fourth weekend of each month. We've been doing this about 17 years, and we feel like it's been good for the city of South Haven, and we'd like to continue it. Because, like I said, we've got a great relationship with all of y'all. And so when the vote is in, and you know for sure, if you can just let us know so we can try to make plans and arrangements. Um, and like you said, you don't know the volleyball schedule because it changes. And our dates are always the same. Fourth weekend of every month, it just changes calendar year. So we would love to, to be able to work in with it. Well, thank you. And, and then just since you're here, I appreciate you coming forward. Are there are there times during the year, does it matter? Is it cyclical? Is there a certain well, time? Well, there's a circuit. People do the, South, do the South Haven flea market the fourth weekend of every month because they do the Jackson flea market on the first weekend or they do um, Tupelo. So, we're locked in for the third weekend. I mean, the fourth weekend, those are our people. And so they'll follow us wherever we go. And, they're, and we've assured them that if, for some reason, we can't do the arena building, that we would find something else in South Haven. And we hope y'all can help us out if it comes to that. OK. OK. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK, next on our agenda is our personnel docket. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the personnel documents presented on the state. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Brooks, second by Alderman Gallagher. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Brooks? Yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Hill? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Hewlett? Yes. Okay, and that motion carries. Next on the agenda is the City Attorney's legal update. Uh, two quick <laughs> items. Uh, the first item is uh, authorization for the mayor to uh, engage Raymond James for the underwriter of the bond. I do know we've approved the uh, bond and then there was no protest, uh, the no protest resolution at the last meeting. This will authorize Raymond James to serve as underwriter uh, part, as part of the bond obligation to um, assist the city as, as the underwriter for this uh, bond issuance and also let them look at other bonds for refinancing that could maybe save the city money. Um, Nothing is paid until a bond until it closes. So tonight, just authorization for the mayor to sign that engagement letter. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Gallagher, a second by Alderman Payne. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Brooks. Yes. Alderman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Hill. Yes. Alderman Payne. Yes. Alderman Gallagher. Yes. Alderman Wheeler. Yes. Okay, and that motion carries. Uh, next item is got this. Uh, it's a proposal um, to allow us to uh, negotiate a lease, which this is how um, <laughs> CB Richard Ellis and Regents Bank wanted to do it. As you know, the parks bill, or not the parks, um, I don't know the court building, uh, we use the uh, Regents parking lot for Monday or Wednesday and Friday court based on limited parking that we have uh, in the parks or in the uh, courts building. 
Um, so that lease will be expiring December 31st of this year. So at this juncture, um, Regions is requesting that we enter into a proposal uh, to allow them to then negotiate a lease with the city. I, I don't know, I, I'll just send you the lease, but this is the protocol they requested. So um, this is what I'm bringing before you tonight. The lease would go from $441 per month to $445 per month, so about $3.13 increase uh, per month. Um, it's probably, we'd lock it in for a 10 year lease, um, but then it, that, that will all be presented to you again uh, once the lease is finalized. Tonight is just authorization for the mayor to sign their proposal so that their attorneys can then prepare the lease. This proposal does not bind you, but it does allow them to go through their protocols to then draft the lease, which will then bind us once that's provided. So that's, I, I can't explain the details. I mean, I don't know why that's how they're wanting to do it, but that's how they're wanting to do it. So anyway, just need a motion to authorize the mayor to sign the proposal uh, for the region's parking lot with C.B. Richard Ellis. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Kelly, second by Alderman Hale. Is there any discussion? Did, is this is this the, uh, the lease we had seen a couple of weeks ago, uh, a copy of, or they talked about a, a yearly increase, a percentage increase? Yes, sir, that, that, that's what's being proposed. Uh, it'd be like, a, it'd be a 1% increase but like I said, it won't be finalized until I get the official. This is just a proposal of terms. The, the, the uh, proposal would be a one will be a one percent increase each year for ten years for that parking lot. And rather than bring the lease to you, you have to bring this to you first, then bring the lease to you, which will be then reapproved by the board. That will bind the board. So they bind this board. It wouldn't bind the next board, obviously. Right. Any other discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Brooks? Yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Hill? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Wheeler? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Thank you, sir. All right, next on the agenda is our claims <coughs> docket. Mr. Mayor, I move we approve the claims docket in the amount of $3,218,141.37. Including demand checks. <laughs> we have a motion by Alderman Payne, second by Alderman Gallagher. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Brooks? Yes. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Hill? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Wheeler? Yes. Okay, and that motion carries. Next on the agenda is uh, to determine the need for executive session. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Brooks, second by Alderman Kelly. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. As have it, motion carries. The need this evening is economic development, personnel and parks and public works, claims against the South Haven Police Department and public works, and lease of city property. Now, is there a motion to declare executive session? So moved. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Payne, second by Alderman Wheeler. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Ayes have it, motion carries. The mayor and board will now enter executive session.